In a unanimous vote last month, the Encinitas Union School District accepted the city of Encinitas $10 million offer to buy the nearly three-acre picturesque school site, which hasn't had students for more than a decade. But the deal comes with some restrictions. Here to talk about those and how the city plans to pay for the land is Encinitas City Council Member Tony Kranz. Welcome. Thank you. Now, Tony, the city got two appraisals on this school land, uh, one for $3.3 million and the other one for $7.3 million. Why did the council end up offering $10 million? Uh, well, we, the land is currently zoned public, semi-public, and we did our appraisals based upon that. The school district's position um, is that the law requires that the city rezone it to residential, uh, the surrounding zoning. And so the value that the school district placed on it was significantly higher than our appraisals. Uh, we went into the negotiations um, taking the position that uh, the value was going to be public, semi-public, and of course they stuck to their residential zoning price. In the end, we got closer to their residential zoning, although I think they probably would have made more in the auction that they were about to embark on. Okay, um, so now we've got this $10 million uh, acceptance bid. Um, how is the city of Encinitas going to pay for that? Well, uh, we're, our budget uh, hearings are in May and the director of finance and the city manager, <coughs> excuse me, are now working to come up with some strategies that we can, you know, use to acquire the site and make the payments. Uh, we do not have cash, so it will be some sort of financing uh, approach, whether, um, you know, that be going to the bond market is, uh, yet to be determined, but it's very likely that we will do lease revenue bonds. And you also mentioned the possibility of crowdsourcing. Uh, crowdsourcing is one option, um, although in order to get the deal closed, uh, we won't be able to use that approach, but there will be other costs that are involved in making the site um, accessible by the public, and so it's much more likely that we would use that for um, improvements on the site and um, other things. $10 million is a lot of public money. Um, why didn't this decision to purchase the property go before voters? Um, you know, this is uh, a strategy that is used fairly frequently, um, more than I would prefer, but it is something that has been done in the past. Um, we've had several projects in Encinitas that have been um, done using lease revenue bonds, and uh, a lease revenue bond doesn't require voter approval. Um, in Encinitas, I think the attitude frequently is that they trust the city council to make the right decisions, and um, if, if we, uh, you know, in, per make a purchase or, or, or embark on a project that they don't approve of, they will um, let us know through the next election. Loud and clear. Um, wh why was acquiring this property important to you and to the city of Encinitas? Well, um, they're essentially the same reason. The history of Encinitas uh, started in this, on this particular lot. Um, there was a one-room schoolhouse that was built on land that was donated by J.S. Pitcher in 1883. Um, there are photographs of our downtown that include um, nothing other than the one-room schoolhouse, a church, and a railroad station, a couple other buildings, but it was, it was pretty sparse back in the 1880s. And this site has been public property ever since that time. And I think that it's important that uh, when the public owns an asset that before it is sold for private development, there should be significant effort made between two public agencies to um, keep the, 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 uh, the to property keep it that public. Way. I know yes. the deal includes an agreement uh, that the land actually remain public, as you were talking about, and it cannot be rezoned or resold. Um, why have those contingencies? Um, well, those were some, some conditions that were put in place uh, that were requested by the school uh, district. Um, we are currently discussing those and uh, the city's position is different than that. We're not, uh, we're not gonna encumber it in that way exactly, but we are certainly interested in keeping the site public. So we're prepared to make that commitment. And then from there, um, you know, I think that it would be uh, important that we have some, some latitude and uh, the school district may end up with some, some uh, a part of whatever we some were to, yeah, Some changes yeah, to that. Right. How will it be decided ultimately what ends up on that site? I mean, you're, you have another library pretty close by, like what, how are you gonna decide that? Well, it'll be an extensive public process. Uh, we've heard um, from the arts community that they want it to be an arts site. 
Uh, I expect it to have an arts uh, component to it and should be significantly arts related. Um, it's, uh, we're looking at it more as a commons area. There will be other uses as well. Um, but so a lot of public input. There will that. be public input and council will have something to say as well. All right, Encinitas City Council Member Tony Kranz, thank you so much. You're welcome.